is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. You all ready for this? Mm -hmm. Da na na da no. da. No. Y'all, y'all, just this stop. This is a sham. <laughs> Welcome to DBL. Happy Tuesday, everybody. It's a very special day, isn't it, Lindsay? It is. It's my baby's first birthday. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh That's a beautiful, we beautiful thing. We made it to thing. one. I can't even believe it. Just like every time I see her in the morning, doesn't matter what's going on. You can have all these emotions, and then you just see your baby, and the day's okay Absolutely. at any point. It's the craziest You guys thing. are making me want to have a baby. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot. Of, everyone's like, this year went by fast. I'm like, it was a whole year for us. Yeah. You know, it, it wasn't fast for us, but it was a beautiful year with ups and downs, no sleep. Now we're sleeping. We put her in the bed intentionally last night because I just was like, this is the last day you're going to be zero. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it I know. was crazy. It's, like, zero. Zero. Yeah. it's a beautiful thing. I sprung that on you so we don't have any pictures, but at the end of the show, we'll pop a couple pictures <laughs> on you. <laughs> All right, let's get to it, guys. Congratulations. Thank so you, Adele Jeff. is giving us a new explanation as to why she canceled her Las Vegas residency at the last minute. So speaking to Elle magazine, she said the show had no soul. She added the stage setup wasn't right and lacked intimacy and was very disconnected from her and the band. At the time, remember, she blamed COVID for production delays and crew issues. She says the new show will tell the story of the beginning of her career till now. Do you think we need to... Why would you go back on that? Say it was a little bit of both. Say Stop. I'm just looking at her Stop. Like Stop talking. Oh, I okay. I, like, I want to hear what Lindsay has to say, well, but I'm just like, stop talking. Well, I was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. She said COVID delays, but it sounded crazy at the time. Yeah. And it's like when you have fans that really follow everything you do and love you and paid thousands of dollars, some of them, to get to those yeah. tickets and probably flights were expensive during that time, risks getting sick to go see you. It's just that the fact that you lied is just going to take over for me. Like, you just lied. Really? Yeah. Like, just say, I wanted to hang out with my man. We were buying a house together. All these other things, but you're blaming COVID. Like, one monkey don't stop no show. Like yeah. the show didn't stop because one person on your crew got not yeah. called a monkey, but you no, no, no. I know that, <laughs> like, it that didn't was stop actually the one name person of a... on your crew. Yeah, got sick. So it, just or even five people, cut it out. You it, have it, backups for backups for backups when you're a. She's, she's a notorious, notorious perfectionist. As is the best of the best, Barbara Streisand. They won't do it unless it's right. But when you come out and you lie. You have really stepped in it on this one. I'm not saying cancel Adele. I'm simply saying the feeling I had in the anger of a lot of people with the babysitters, because she did it like 24 hours before it, mm -hmm. to do that and then to lie about it, not a great choice in my mind book. I would have said never share this information. And then what was with, never. The, what was with the crying video? Then? Right. Was right. That, Were you really shattered? Was that real? Were yeah. you really gutted? I, listen, we've talked before on the show, Al, about like her losing some fans from this. And people are like, no, she'll be all right. I think she's going to lose some fans. Again, I think the residency will sell out, but I think she's going to lose a couple fans. Yeah, but then they weren't fans. You know, I like the fact that my artists are perfectionists and they want to make you sure spend money? that my show, even if I spend money. Okay. Honestly, when you talk about, when you go home and you listen to Purple Rain, what do you think, Prince did that in one cut? <laughs> like, honestly, it, it's because he was a genius and uh, fixated almost probably, the, you know, over, overly about the, the perfection in his music, the perfection in how he presents this music that he loves and he's worked so hard on. So, like, the fact that, like, she was like, this set doesn't look right. This, you know, the vibe is not what I'm trying to put out. Do but you just say that. To, That's what I, I think people would have accepted somebody in these days where we're just being so transparent, transparent every yeah. day yep. to right. just say this, so ha this show has no It soul. wasn't right. Right. You can't do it right now. I think they would have accepted that more than COVID and um, fake tears that we don't believe. It just Yeah, because, listen, they're going to rip it apart if it's not good. I get that. The critics are going to tear that apart. But here's the thing. She could have, because people were there. Yeah, in People the were in their rooms. Yeah. They paid flights. Be like, listen, I'm going to put on a couple intimate shows, three shows. This isn't where, at all where I want it to be. I'm not even putting production on. I'm going to have a piano guy and a and microphone. Mic. That's it. And I'm going to give you guys an intimate show. But trust me, the show is not ready. But since you guys are here, I'm going to I agree for with you. you. The show must That's go on. how I think I she could have handled it. I get she would have got ripped by the critics if it wasn't yeah. perfect, but her going back and forth and then the tearful like goodbye, whatever it was, you know. What I mean? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> that's her. That's her follow-up. Goodbye. Man. No, that was my 
my <laughs> goodbye was a mocking her I hello. Know. That was a good, good joke, Jeff. I got it. I didn't get it. That was such a good joke. I didn't get it. That was really good. That was really good. I'm not being sarcastic. That was a good joke. All right. Anne Heche. <laughs> that was a good joke. Anne Heche's ex, James Tupper, is slamming rumors that the actress was, quote, crazy. So James and Anne, uh, James and Anne started, starred in the TV show Men in Trees together and dated for 11 years and also had a son. He recently thanked one of their co-stars who defended the late actress on Instagram. So Emily Burgle, who said people often asked her what it was like working with the quote crazy Anne Heche. So in her post, Emily said Anne was not only a genius, but one of the most astoundingly focused and prepared actors I've ever worked with. She was talking about mental health before it was acceptable to talk about though talk about those struggles. In fact, Anne was candid about her mental health and addressed the stigma head on in her autobiography back in 2001. The autobiog autobiography is called Call Me Crazy, which is out of print and selling for more than $700 now. That's why we were trying Amazon. to figure out why it was up. so expensive. Yeah, we couldn't figure that out. It's probably rare to get one, and now posthumously it's worth more. I don't really get this story. She was very honest about having mental health struggles. I don't call that crazy because I think that's offensive. I have mental health problems. I don't call myself crazy, but I. she was very open and transparent about it in a great way. Saying that she wasn't crazy to me somewhat dismisses all that she was an activist for. But Am I wrong? Well, I don't think we should minimize people down to one moment of their life ever, which is why there was a lot of harshness coming from like, why would she do that? Why would she drive that crazy? But then also, I hope that she faces the consequences that everyone else does. And part of that sentiment was, I hope that she recovers well. Right. And so since all those things, you know, didn't happen because she unfortunately passed, it just is like, when somebody's gone especially, I don't like when people try to minimize them to one moment of their life. Yeah. It's, it's, it's too easy to do, especially if you die in either a spectacular way, something like an, a car accident, and you're famous, you know, James Dean is still famous. For totally. Things. You know, you know, Sam Kinison. Uh, but, you know, I look at this, and I, this is what I always have issues with when we talk about mental health and we talk about supporting people. It's all good until you feel like you can get a joke off, until you feel like you can make fun of somebody. And the fact that Anne Heche was a pioneer, one of them, in terms of coming out and being a lesbian before it was cool, mm -hmm. before it was a hashtag, when that would probably cost you a career, You're absolutely definitely right. cost you millions of dollars, especially where she was. These pioneers, in a weird way, kind of get pushed back to the side. And now when they pass away, because I'm sure, can you imagine what she was dealing with? Like telling somebody that you're, what your agent would tell you to say, and the fact that she came out with that, uh, of course it probably drove her crazy. And this is the, the tail end of that. I'm not absolving her, but I'm saying when you push people to a place that they, they're not ready to go, this is the result. Yeah, I just hope she rests in peace. You know Absolutely. what I mean? All the speculation of this and that and what was in and what was it? Was she crazy? What? Just let it rest let in it rest peace. In you know what I mean? Just let it rest in peace. The tabloids are a little bit too aggressive for my style in 2022. And uh, let's just let her, let her, let her accomplish her shine awesome and let her life. rest in peace. That's yeah. right. That's right. And people forget that people have family. So no yeah, matter what the circumstances course. surrounding her, son. Yeah. she has family that's still alive and yeah. mourning her death. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. So coming up on DBL, he's written some of your favorite books. James Patterson stopped by DBL. How his latest project is completely different from the rest. And a Wizard of Oz remake is in the works, but should some classics be left alone? Yes. Closed captioning provided by. I think it is one of those stories we're all gonna be like, what? Oh, so raised yeah. you. Why am I right all the time? <laughs> <You're not laughs> am I going crazy? Welcome to another oh, week yeah. of Jeff's Mustache. Wow. In that movie and changed it. Okay, How we're talking you, about The Wiz, about which was an yeah, edit. Tell everybody. Well, we're, we're redoing movies. I said, well, The Wiz was redone from The Wizard well, of Oz, well, correct? Right. And it was successful. And he said, yeah, and a million years ago. And I said, okay. Uh, <laughs> that was fair. Probably. But, but I said, they had the biggest star, so who could it be now? Like, so basically, The Wiz, if you don't know, was uh, an, ad an African American adaptation of uh, The Wizard of Oz. So it's like, you know, funkier. Right. Uh, <laughs> Dancing. Yeah. Like, had Michael Jackson in it. Had right. Diana Ross. Michael, yeah, an all-star cast. So it's like, who would play? But uh, Kenya Barris is executive producing this new version, allegedly. Mm. So you know he does blackish, yeah. like he intentionally yeah. infuses diversity in all of the things that he writes. Right. So this could be like a new age. And I think it would be cool if they kind of did it. That that when I went to go see Hamilton, I thought that was the one cool thing is 
the actors are so good, good like that. that you're yeah. not, you don't Thank go, you. why you're is George welcome. Washington a black man? Like, right. I Doesn't never matter. had that thought. And um, I think the Wiz and just kind of in, picking the best people and the best actors, I think that could work. And I think it's, oh, okay, good. for people like what me that would I never do? sit through okay. a new Wizard of Oz, I would yep. watch the Wiz. It's a little bit quicker. I get the <laughs> yeah, Wizard of Oz, no, no shame, but like, yeah. no shame. Did you shade, know like, Wizard of Oz was actually a take on populism? Oh. No, mm -hmm. it should be cushion. That's so yep. in the weeds. Yep. So explain it. Break it down for the audience. Basically, the Emerald City is money, and it's all about trying to get to money. And the gold, yellow bricks is like it'll lead you there. It'll lead you there. Oh, but in the end, there's nothing that. there. It's not a real wizard. Do I know it's something else? That's kind of interesting. It's a whole story L. Frank Baum wrote about Oz because it was about um, capitalism and populism and the the. Addiction, which is why she gets into the poppies. Remember, she falls asleep in the poppies. Oh, the addiction, heroin. Yeah. yeah, heroin. The addiction oh. of getting money at the Emerald City. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of felt that. Welcome back. That, of course, was the classic film, The Wizard of Oz. And let's turn Tony that Garden. down. <laughs> it's a classic. I just said, let's turn that down. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I know, now Steve, you're no longer wow. beloved. That's going to be your new thing. Every time you say something, boom, oh. that, that music's coming out. Steve's got a new toy in there. New little All right. So, of course, that was Judy Garland. Now, a new whiz is in the works. So, according to Variety, the creator of the TV show Blackish is set to write and direct a reimagining of The Wizard of Oz. There's also another remake in the works. Both films will be based on the book The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. There have been other remakes before, like the 1978 movie The Wiz with Diana Ross and Michael Jackson, you guys were just talking about it in the break, and the Broadway musical Wicked about the Wicked Witch of the West, which was fantastic. Fantastic. Right. Yes. What was based on another one of Baum's books. Really? Yeah. Wow. He continued writing. And did you know, is this interesting? Yeah. Like I said before, you know everything about The Wizard of Oz was based on populism and capitalism and trying to get to the Emerald City was trying to get to the money all the time and getting addicted, like falling in the poppies. So there's a lot there that you could really work with. A lot of these remakes, like too, that. like explore the dark side. So I don't know if Kenya Barris, who's the executive producer of Blackish, is going to go that route. But he also, what I love, always infuses diversity into all of his cast. If you look at some of his work for like the last two decades, Decades, he makes sure that the best actor, like Al was, like Al was saying, is in the film. It's not about, okay, are you white, are you black? Colorblind. Exactly. Yeah. Just as like, who's the best character for this role? And I appreciate that. So if you talk about reimagining it, I think kids need to know about like what historical fairy tales that we all loved. And the way to attach them to it, I think, is to watch the new one and then go back and watch the old one together if you have a young kid like me. Yeah, yeah, but uh, isn't there diversity built into that? They're not even like Yeah, there, there is there's a, a, there's, lion. There's, there's a yeah. line in there. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, scarecrow? I, it'd be I easy a, to make that cast diverse. Right, right? Right, I have right, a question right. for you, like, and, and I want all you guys to answer this. This is being remade. Obviously, we don't know like what angle that uh, they're going to take. But would you prefer like just a straight remake with kind of new people, or would you want the kind of darker take? Because you know sometimes they'll do a darker Superman, a darker Batman. Joker. Like yeah, joke. Some sometimes movies are kind of playful and old school, and some are dark. Would you guys be cool with like a dark Wizard of Oz? It has to be, or else it's the exact same thing. Like for me, West Side Story, I love it, but. I didn't think at all, I'll be honest, that Spielberg needed to remake that. I know it was great, people loved it, it's a great movie, I know, but I have, I, he made it the same. But it's what already about one of the other characters' perspectives, like, like flying like monkeys. Ooh, you cool. know, like it would be nice to see, like, what was the Tin Man thinking that whole time? You know, he was <laughs> like a side character. Maybe he won't be the main totally. character. Well, it's somebody. easy to make him the bad guy, right? He's got no heart, so he don't mind. Oh, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> a couple of heads. The Tin Man's bad. This could be like the DC universe. It could just spin off into different things. It I could. would, I really would watch this like a Tin Man origin. He story. doesn't have a heart, right? Is that right. the Tin he Man? Right, he has no heart. Okay, no. yeah, because he could definitely be the bad guy. That's you know what I mean? Here's some drugs for your kids. Yeah, exactly. Play like drugs for the kids. See, the kids now I'm back on it. Yeah. Now I like it. It's, yeah, you could hide it right in there. Right in there. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? If they get in there, it's too personal. Like, and then they're going to be trying to cancel that whole movie for having for sure. drugs in a tin hat. Okay? What were some other? What was the line? No courage, right? And then no brain. Scarecrow was no brain, and she wanted to go back home. 
Oh, so maybe I could be up for that role. <laughs> Put the name I in jumped right on now. it before Tori did. <laughs> All right, let's go. Coming up on DBL, you may have one of his books on your shelf right now. Best-selling author James Patterson tells us all about his most personal book yet. This summer, several record-breaking heat waves were reported in many places throughout the world, including in the U.S. More than 125 million Americans were under heat advisories and urged to stay indoors. But some people who work outside didn't have that option. Like this UPS driver that collapsed in the heat in front of a home in Arizona, captured on a doorbell video camera. The homeowner blames it on the lack of AC. They don't have AC in those trucks. His safety is my concern. Many people on social media, including a UPS driver on TikTok, have made the same claim. And Verify viewer Kim asked us to confirm whether that was true or false. So let's verify. Our sources are the United Parcel Service, the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, the labor union representing 350,000 UPS workers, and UPS driver Charles Zamora from Mount Vernon, New York, who showed Verify the inside of his truck. We have the doors open because there is no, there is no AC. Both UPS and the union confirmed that UPS delivery trucks do not have air conditioning installed. Zamora says working in the extreme heat without AC takes a toll on his body. Sometimes you can't really breathe because you're so hot. In a July 20th Facebook post, the Teamsters discussed the truck's lack of air conditioning, writing that UPS has claimed that air conditioning would be ineffective in cooling down the company's package delivery trucks. A UPS spokesperson told Verify the company's delivery trucks make frequent stops, which requires the engine to be turned off and the doors to be opened and closed about 130 times a day on average. Their solution? UPS says it offers fans to drivers upon request, adding, We have studied heat mitigation with our vehicles and integrated forced air systems with venting to create airflow around the driver and cargo areas. So we can verify, no, UPS delivery trucks don't have air conditioning. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Daytil. Welcome back. He's written some of the best thrillers of our time, and you probably have a few of his books on your shelf right now. Check out our interview with the great James Patterson. Hey there. Wow. Yes. James, quite the fan club over here. We get some big names, but apparently uh, Jimmy Pat is yes. how, it, how it's yeah. going down over here. JP. Right. JP. Jimmy Pat, I'll take that. All right. <laughs> All right, so James, is it true that you once saw a fan steal one of your books? How did that go down? I and think you, it was Tori. And you give him a double leg or her. Uh, yeah, it was Tori. <laughs> Uh, I, this was early. <laughs> it, it was early on, and uh, uh, you know, if, if somebody picks up our book, we'll watch them. Authors, and I watched this this woman. She this is early on in my career, and she picked up the book, and uh, and she put it under her arm, and she walked down an aisle, and then she slid it into her pocketbook, and uh, she stole it. <laughs> but my only thing was, does it count as a sale? You know? you, mean you just let her walk out. You didn't like give a little tap on the shoulder. No, I, 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 I thought I might be happy. I thought if it counted as a sale, it would be good. <laughs> it, was, it was the bookstore's job to get her, right? you oh, know. Yep. He's a good guy. He's a yeah. great guy. That would be the most meta moment ever is when James Patterson stops you outside the bookstore For to say, crime. put James Patterson's, Patterson's book, book back. back. Yeah, yeah. Give, <laughs> that would be book back. <laughs> That would be so weird. Um, hi, I'm Tori. Big fan, Alex Cross, my whole family. Anyway, in your autobiography, you wrote that growing up, you actually had zero interest in being a writer. So I need to know how you yeah. went from that to writing some of the best-selling thrillers of our time and also being a really prolific writer. I mean, I, I, I need them, so I need them like a, an addiction. Yeah. Somebody said you're lucky if you find something in life you like to do, and I think there's some truth there. And then it's a miracle if somebody will pay you to do it. Yeah. And that's kind of what happened to me. I mean, I came from, my father grew up in a Newburgh poorhouse. Uh, his, his mother was a charwoman there. She cleaned the bathrooms and stuff. So my background is, is sort of, you know, kind of down to earth. And, uh, and I, I still look at it as a blessing that everything that happens to me, writing books with Bill Clinton or Dolly Parton, this is a thrill. This is, it's just exciting. Being on the show today, that's Aww. fun. Oh, that's, well, it's, it's an honor to talk to you. Now I have to know, in terms of writing partners, like, I know you can't say which one you prefer, but tell us the styles between Dolly I'm Parton and Bill Clinton. I'm not telling you which one I prefer. <laughs> yeah. I know who that is. That's Clinton. Yeah, so what, what's it like having him as a writing partner? Tell him apart? 
<laughs> they're both great. And, and the nice thing, <laughs> the nice thing about both of them is they become friends. Honestly, I mean, we were out with with uh, on Saturday night with Hillary and Bill, wow. which was terrific. Um, and Dolly, actually, for my birthday, she sent me, and she knew it was good because she she framed it. But she sent me a poem that she'd written called New Old Friends. Mm. And in the poem, she said she'd written a, 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 a song with Kenny Rogers in which they agreed there were no such thing as new old friends. And she said, even though we've only been together for about 18 months writing the book and now doing the movie, she said, you are a new old friend and we're that close. And then it said, I will always love you, Dolly. So, oh, I mean, that's been the kidding? really nice thing for me. Wow. Uh, both of these, it's just very, very sweet and fun and nice and, you know, like that. That's the way you want it to be, right? I mean, sure, you guys are close, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we hate each other. We, it's a love-hate relationship. I'm not here. sending Sam any right, letters, okay. <laughs> you know, but we are close. I would like a poem from you, Al. Okay. I would prefer a we'll poem. We'll use Dolly's poem. Um, okay, the fact that you've become so close with some of the people that you've co-written books with, if you could pick anyone, and I really want you to think about this, living or dead, Ooh. who would you co-write yeah. a book with and why? Ooh. That's good. Well, man, I'd like to do. I'd like to do with the Pope. I think that'd be cool. Putin. Uh, the only trouble there is I, he'd probably kill me. But yeah. Putin, that'd be, he's got a lot of stories. I think. Um, you know, I mean, those would in terms of, of people that are alive, um, dead. I'd have to think about that a little bit. I'd like to know more about Shakespeare. So that'd Ooh, be interesting. That would be good. I, mean, he, I think he had a lot of a lot of collaborators. So we might hit it off. Wow. I feel I like it. he's so down to earth, though. He'd be like, yes, yeah, so I wrote a book with Shakespeare. And he's really <laughs> yeah. nice. We went to he dinner wrote yeah. a poem. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're going Billy to dinner. It's OK. Yeah. 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 It's very easy. All right, you just published a new book called Diana, William, and Harry about the royals. Now, yeah. how did Princess Diana protect her kids from the pressures of royal life? What was that like also researching? that that's well fortunately which i didn't know till about halfway through um in england they have this archive where the british reporters everything that they've ever written about diana was there oh wow so that really really was helpful so there's a lot of stuff in the book that's never been out here in america but the whole focus of it when you watch a movie like spencer and it's so dark and whatever and that certainly was a part of her story but another big part of hers was just the way she felt about her kids. And she said she had never experienced true happiness until she held William in her arms. Aww. And, and you know, she had been a nursery school teacher when she was very young. And, and I think, you know, being a mom and having kids, you know, she, 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 she wanted that and she mm. needed it. And, uh, and she, was, she was very kind of naughty, naughty humor. For Will's uh, uh, 13th birthday, he had these pictures of models on his wall. And he, he actually, she invited uh, Claudia Schiffer oh. and, and Christy Turlington and <laughs> Naomi Campbell to his birthday party. And then she gave him a, 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 a cake. So, you know, she was kind of naughty and that was kind of fun. And that was her relationship. And the boys said, they said she was the best mother ever. Wow. Best ever mother ever. I That's amazing. Wow. Thank you so much, yeah. uh, JP, for chatting. <laughs> Thank you. Autobiography. We could have done another 10 minutes. Yeah, sure. we got to have you back we immediately. Have to. And James's right. autobiography, James Patterson by James Patterson, is on sale now. And his latest book, Diana, William, and Harry, is out today. Look yes. at these two bad boys. I got them thank right you. here, Tori. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, thank you so much. We appreciate you, James. Hope to see you soon. Okay, appreciate thank you. Big honor. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Promotional consideration is brought to you by... touch a lot of surfaces every day that other people have also touched. Amid the monkeypox outbreak, which the federal government has declared a public health emergency, many people online have questions about how the virus spreads. Verify viewers Becky and Rob specifically asked whether monkeypox can be transmitted by touching surfaces. So let's verify. Can you get monkeypox by touching contaminated surfaces? Our sources are the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the California Department of Public Health, and Dr. Scott Roberts, Assistant Professor of Infectious Diseases at the Yale School of Medicine, who says the risk of getting infected through a surface is quite low. It's not zero, uh, but it is low. And so that risk of a fleeting contact or somebody briefly touching something probably does not lead to enough virus on that surface to infect you if you get exposed. So yes, a person could get infected with monkeypox by touching contaminated objects, fabrics, or surfaces that have been used by someone with the virus. But that's not the most common way that it spreads. Monkeypox transmission primarily occurs through close, personal, often skin-to-skin -skin contact with people who have monkeypox symptoms, such as a rash and sores, according to the CDC and the California Department of Public Health. 
Roberts says studies are currently ongoing about how long the virus can survive on surfaces. So far, experts know that the virus family monkeypox comes from can survive on surfaces, particularly when in cool, dark and low humidity environments. But Dr. Roberts and the CDC both say that these viruses are sensitive to many disinfectants. This virus is easily killed. So common disinfectants that we use, such as alcohol wipes or Lysol wipes, very easily kill the monkeypox virus. So we can verify, yes, monkeypox can spread by touching contaminated surfaces, but the current risk is low. Health experts are much more concerned about COVID-19 because unlike monkeypox, the virus can spread through the air. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. You've seen the photos, blisters and bumps on the skin, what many have come to know as the hallmark of a monkeypox infection. But does it always look like this? Our question, does a monkeypox rash always happen outside of the body? Our sources, Dr. Cameron Wolf, an infectious disease specialist with Duke Health, and the CDC. You don't need to have skin surface blisters. I think that's actually a big part of clinician education is that it's not just the skin lesion. Wolf says sometimes the rash appears on what are called the mucous membranes. Those are the moist inner linings of some organs and body cavities. They can be in the mouth. They can be inside the rectum, for example. They can be in the vaginal canal. In fact, an early CDC analysis of monkeypox cases in the U.S. found the rash was most frequently reported on the genitals, with 46 percent of people experiencing that. The next most common places for the rash were arms, face and legs. Wolf says it's why healthcare providers should be attuned to other red flags that might indicate hidden blisters. Rectal pain, pain on defecation is a common way of finding. Them. So we can verify, no, a monkeypox rash is not always outside of the body. And doctors say knowing that might help some detect infections sooner. Welcome back. If you have arthritis, you're all too familiar with the pain and swelling that everyday activities can cause. So how can you ease that joint pain? It's time for some joint and muscle support brought to you by Omega XL. While treatments may include different kinds of medications and even steroid injections, did you know that regular massages can improve your circulation and ease the symptoms of arthritis? Studies have found that massages reduce pain, increase blood flow, and can even boost your mood. Omega XL has improved the lives of lives of millions of consumers <laughs> supported by 30 years of clinical research. Omega XL's powerful and proven benefits have transformed the lives of athletes, celebrities and dedicated daily users. Call 1-800-686-5325 or visit OmegaXL.com for more information. And as promised, <laughs> we got some Kinsley pictures <laughs> we before we go pictures. because we want to wish her an official happy first oh, birthday. Happy birthday, birthday baby. Picture. <laughs> Oh, man, I can't believe it. We made it. Doesn't it blow your mind? It like, does. It does. She's like a little person with a personality now. And I'm just like, wow. You know, I have no ownership over you. You're going to be a whole human. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to watch her grow into whoever she's going to be. It's I, gonna be. such a I beautiful I absolutely thing. love it. I'm like looking. It's just like the way that I, I mark time is through our, you guys' kids. Yeah. You know, and I just seeing uh, uh, late in the other day how grown he looks. And like I remember looking at Lindsay. You were doing uh, something to the wall. You were introducing something. And I was like, why is Lindsay wearing such a big dress? Yeah, oh my God, so good. And then, you were, and then you were like, oh, I, then you like said it the next day. You're like, oh, because I was like, you just didn't wear stuff like that? And I was like, is it that? I, was, I didn't see it. Well, it was you and Brandon London. He was like, you look like Big Bird. I had a yellow <laughs> big <laughs> thing on. It was crazy. Chloe. I was being crazy. Was I should just told everybody I was pregnant. It's a beautiful day <laughs> to you shout. and your family. We'll see you guys tomorrow.